Welcome back to Gamer Sanctuary, Fresh Coast Gaming fans. Uh, kind of a eclectic night here uh, at Gamer Sanctuary. It's a Wednesday. Uh, Mike and Joe are just finishing up a bolt action game. Joe and one of his friends are playing some Infinity over there. Behind me, Jeremy and one of his buddies are playing Dead Zone. It's crazy. There's magic going on. Um, but the highlight, what we're going to do today, Oscar and I are going to play the first week of uh, uh, the new Kill Team campaign that Dave, uh, one of the employees here at Gamer Sanctuary, is uh, running for us. Um, it's nice to not have to run anything and to be able to participate in something for a change. So, uh, if you're not familiar with the Kill Team rules, we're not doing. It's not a GW product. This is a uh, kind of a fan product by a, a group called Heralds of Ruin. It, I'm going to put a link to the uh, uh, to their site in the description. Check it out, guys. It's fantastic. Uh, I like it so much we stole most of their uh, campaign processes for upgrading characters for the last or Recente's campaign. Um, however, this time, we're doing kill teams, and the premise is you've got 250 points to create a force, and then you get to bring 200 points of that every week, and uh, you guys get upgrades, you can buy equipment, all kinds of stuff throughout the campaign, and it's an awful lot of fun. So today, um, because he, did, he had the day off of school, Oscar came up with me, he hung out with me at, at my job today, uh, we just finished ice skating with uh, 70 kids, uh, so we're kind of beat up a little bit, but um, we're ready for some 40k. Let's take a look and see what the two of us have brought for our armies. That's it. That's everything we have. That's two forces right there. 250 points apiece. Um, I am going to be playing just my Harlequins today. One of the cool things about uh, Heralds of Ruin's site is that they broke down every 40k codex into usable codexes for their game. In addition, though, they made some that are more niche. For example, there's a straight Harlequin codex. Those of you Tyranid players uh, who loved your Gene Sealer cults, guess what? They have a Gene Sealer Cult Codex just for you. Um, the way they, they you build an army, you have a prerequisite leader unit, uh, a certain number of available core units, and then special units as well that you, you can cap out on. Uh, my army, for example, includes my troop master. He's got a power sword and a special piece of war gear that is really going to make Oscar angry. Um, we'll get into that during the game. Uh, Shadow Seer with uh, all her grenades. She's got some special grenades as well, and her, she has some special ammunition for her shuriken pistol, which makes it uh, flesh pain. I have a Death Jester, of course, with a Shrieker Cannon. I have two regular Harlequins in back, just uh, close combat weapons and Shuriken Pistols. Two with Harlequin Kisses on the side. I'm sorry, two with Kisses right there, and one with a Fusion Pistol right there. That's 250 points worth of Harlequins. It's, it doesn't look like much for me. Uh, I am definitely going to be outnumbered by this green tide that Oscar decided to bring. He's got a, uh, a Knob and Mega Armor with a uh, Combi Scorcha. Two Burner Boys, a War Biker. Two mobs of five boys each. Uh, the ones with the red are straight. The ones in the black have a big shooter. Uh, he has a mech with, uh, of course, mech's tools. And he gave him a special piece of war gear called the Bouncy Shield. He's got an invuln save that can deflect shots onto different people. And then he has some armor. He's got a uh, kill a cam with a Grotzuka. And uh, Grot Riggers as well, so for some, it will not die. The way the game works, it's a lot like Necromunda. Um, every model is actually a, a separate unit, except for, of course, the squads of boys. They have to stay together. But they can act completely independently, shoot it, things independently, and basically cause a lot of havoc all on their own. Uh, so we, we have played this in the past. We were able to, to kind of help uh, Dave demo it uh, last year, and we loved it, but we never, didn't get a chance to participate. So now we're hoping to actually be able to do so. We're going to set up a table and get rolling some dice real quick. As it turns out, there's another player up here who's looking to play a kill team game. Uh, so Matt is going to jump in with his Dark Eldar. Um, he's got a squad of witches. I'm not going to go over the, the, all the unique war gear that they have because I'm sure he's going to try to surprise us with some shenanigans stuff because none of us really know the new Dark Eldar Codex all that well. Uh, he's got five witches, a, a Sybarite. Am I saying that right? Siren. Oh, Siren, okay. And then uh, two, four, six, eight warriors. They all look like they have splinter rifles. So we're going to get a mission, uh, we've got a table set up, and then we're going to get started on a three-way. Oh, there's a blaster in there somewhere? Yeah, stay away from him, Oscar. Stay away from the guy with the blaster. So here's our table. We decided to go big and play on a 6x4. we got lots of terrain all over the place. Uh, the mission is called Possession. There are 15 objectives around the table. Essentially, it plays just like the Relic in a standard game of 40k, uh, except... There are 15 of them, so the, the, the team that has the most by the end of the game wins the game, and they're going to get the bonus requisition points for uh, winning the campaign. You get one bonus point, though, for each relic you happen to be controlling. I only have six models, so I'm in trouble already from the get-go. Um, fortunately, I have the first turn, so I'm going to try to get Veil of Tears up to, to protect my guys 
from some shooting attacks so I can get close. Uh, but Matt's over here in the corner. He's got his witches here. And warriors are in that bunker right there. Oscar's got a big old mob of boys with his mega knob coming at me. And then his uh, kill a can and mech are going to run that way and try to grab some objectives. Oh, and his burners are ready to go into the building to grab that one. So we're going to get started. I have the first turn. They both failed the seize. Uh, and then... Um, that's it, I guess I'll tune back in after turn one. <clears throat> All right, for my turn, pretty simple. My Harlequin stayed in formation because I have Veil of Tears on my uh, Shadow Seer, which um, is back to the old uh, 2d6 uh, uh, times two shooting distance on them, which is gonna be some serious protection in this game. Uh, but I didn't get close enough with the guys who were running to grab any objectives yet, uh, and I don't wanna split them off yet until they are a little closer and I feel like killing them. Uh, however, the Death Jester did whack off a couple shots at one of the Burner Boys over there at long range and managed to drop him with a Bladestorm shot, so. Oscar's down one burner boy. All right, for Matt's turn, um, it seems the theme of the first turn so far is that Eldar are really slow, either way, either Harlequin or Dark Eldar. Uh, everything kind of ran forward, but only rolled ones and twos, just like I did. Um, so Matt's going for this objective over here. He's trying to get that one as well, and he's got some warriors here in the bunker. They tried to take some pot shots at my Harlequins over here, but he, uh, he didn't roll high enough through Veil of Tears, so he couldn't shoot them. Over here, same thing. It's just a whole bunch of slowness from Dark Eldar, but they're getting into position. So we're up to Oscar's turn. We'll see what the orcs can do. Okay, Oscar took his turn. Uh, we got the Killican who grabbed an objective over here. He had to run to get it. The uh, Mega Knob grabbed another one. So Oscar has two. Matt grabbed the two that were in that bunker, by the way. Uh, so he has two also. Um, the boys here moved forward and then took a long shot at one of Matt's warriors over there in the bunker. Uh, hit it once, wounded him, but Matt made his cover save, so all is peachy. And that's it. We're going to go into my turn next. Harlequin turn two. My um, Harlequin, these two split off. These are just the bare bones Harlequins. One grabbed an objective, and they both shot at some orcs, and I failed to do anything. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm rolling terribly right now. The Death Jester rolls triple ones trying to shoot those two guys in the doorway. It was comical. Um, and then my Shadow Seer, uh, one of my Harlequin Kisses and the Troop Master moved up here and hid behind that building to give themselves complete block line of sight from over that way. I'm not too worried about Orky shooting, but it, it is Oscar's dice after all, you never know. So we're going to move into Matt's turn two. I did grab three points, three objectives by the way, I grabbed one, two, three. Alright, Matt's showing his veteran expertise in this uh, uh, kill team campaign, especially in this mission. He's kind of spread people around, he's got a lot of bodies, and they're just grabbing objectives. He has a grand total of five or six now? Well, you grabbed this one too. Five, yep. Yeah, you got six. Yeah, you got six now. Um, so he has jumped off to a big lead early on, and we're going to try to hopefully knock him off some of them. Um, he had all of his warriors up here in the building, though. Took pot shots at my death gesture, but because I'm still within Veil of Tears range, uh, he couldn't roll high enough. He almost did. He got a nine when he needed a ten, and um, just wasn't quite enough. So I'm still safe for now, and Matt is still <laughs> racking up points. We're gonna go to Oscar's turn next. Orcs turn two. The, the mob of boys came over here and shot at and uh, took out my Harlequin in the building. Actually managed to take it out of the game by rolling a five on the injury table. Uh, the Killican keeps advancing towards the objectives to grab one for the mech. And the uh, the big boss, the mega boss, um, shot at the Death Jester, was able to see him through Veil of Tears, hit him twice with sixes and rolls a double twos to wounds, so no wounds. Wait, and uh, also... And, oh yeah, and your, the, the Burner Boy in the building grabbed, Burner Boy in the building grabbed uh, the objective. So now we're going to move into Harlequin turn three. Harlequin turn three could have been a lot better. Um, Death Jester took a shot at the uh, the big uh, mech, the, the big boss in mega armor, put a wound on him, and he failed his pinning check from the Shrieker ammo, so that's actually helpful. Uh, I kind of skirted around the building to, to protect myself from some splinter rifle shots. My Harlequin with the Harlequin kiss over here jumped over and shot one of the witches to death that was holding that objective. Right in the face. Right in the face. <laughs> and uh, she's now out in the open. That's bad. Over here, the Troop Master had an epic failure when he tried to charge two uh, um, of the witches at once. One of them failed, failed their fear check against his mask, and then I did nothing in combat. I only hit each one once and failed the wound, rolling a pair of twos. So I lost the, my, uh, the, the, any advantage I have with my Furious Charge. So, we're going to move into Matt's turn. I'm going to lose some Harlequins again. Oh, I forgot the, the other thing that happened. Um, my Harlequin that was down here jumped up, grabbed that objective, shot at and did nothing to the boys, and then tried to charge them. Slugger boy here hitting an Overwatch, and the big shooter boy hit... Oh, I'm sorry. That one with the chain sword, and the big shooter hit on Overwatch shots, and Oscar rolled two crits. I managed to save one of them, but failed on the other, and lost a second Harlequin to those boys. 
But now we're gonna move into Matt's turn. You guys need to start fighting each other. <laughs> All right, uh, Dark Eldar turn was really good. I can't. I'm not gonna mince words. Um, it, aside from in here, it took five warriors just to knock down that one Harlequin. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Um, At least you uh, can charge. Yeah, I think I, I can't do anything except get up and shoot this turn. But that's okay. Uh, over here, my uh, troop master managed to finish off one of the witches in combat. Uh, I crit her with my power sword. She died. Um, but they both crit me once each. And uh, I only made one of my saves, so I died there as well, because I only had one wound left. I took one last turn. Uh, back over here, the uh, kill a can got immobilized from uh, a shot from the blaster that poked its head out around the corner. That was pretty good. So uh, we're going to move now to Oscar's turn three and see if he can't uh, keep pushing towards some objectives and try to, to keep pace with Matt. Matt's got a bunch of points right now. Orcs turn three. Uh, the boys over here moved into the building. The, the big shooter guy got up and we had a line of fire on one of the uh, the, the Kabbalat warriors over there and crit him to death. Over here, the Grotzuka fired twice at the blaster, being the only weapon on the table that can kill him. Um, and he scattered badly on the first. I want to point, show these off. These are the, the, some new uh, blast marker and flamer templates we got from a uh, one of our fans on YouTube. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce the name of the company. It's Pyrocol or Pyrocol. Again, I'll put a link to their stuff on the uh, in uh, in the comments. Guys, these are gorgeous. I love them. They looked great in pictures, but when we got them in person. There were like six of us tonight just kind of drooling all over these things. So they are awesome. Again, I'll put the link in the, the description. Um, Matt's going to steal them, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, the blast uh, did hit the uh, the uh, the warrior with the blaster, but Oscar only rolled a one for the injury, so he just knocked him down. And that's it. Failed to repair him with the uh, the mech, although the mech did grab another objective, and the burner boy's running out of the building just trying to protect the one he's got. That's it. We're going to move into turn four. Uh, turn four is going to be super fast for my Eldar because I am down to 50%. I'm not even going to take the roll. I'm just going to go into full retreat and take my stuff off the table and live to fight another day with those three guys. I have enough uh, wound rolls i got to make with the guys who survived, or guys who died. Um, yeah, I'm going to have a, a tough a tough go if everyone in this uh, campaign is bringing horde armies against my, uh, my super elite Harleys. So... My turn four is done, so we're going to move on to Matt's. All right, Matt picked up a couple more objectives this turn. All of his guys just ran forward. He took some shots at the uh, the big mech, uh, the big uh, knob, the mega knob dude, whatever, and uh, nothing happened to him. Nothing happened. The blaster guy got up, shot, but he hit the barrels in front and gave the cover save. Uh, but the splinter rifles over there did manage to stun the mech. So he's face down. Next turn, he's going to roll over and be uh, knocked down, and then he gets right back up the following turn, if there is a following turn. So right now it's Oscar's turn four, and uh, we'll see what happens after that. Orc turn four, big shooter. Took out the warrior that was standing on top of that crate right there. Uh, that was a crit, and um, Matt failed his feel no pain and cover save, so he's dead. Over here, the uh, boss shot at that warrior back there behind cover and failed to do anything against him. Grotzuka. Stunned the uh, the guy with the blaster, so he's out for two turns. He's gonna have to roll over, and then he's gonna have to stand up the following turn. Uh, in other news, the uh, mech is now just knocked down, so he can act normally not next turn. He has to he's still knocked down, has to get up next turn. Uh, and then the grot uh, we already did the grotsuk. Oh, he got a whole point back from his uh, it will not die thing from the grot riggers. And, and that's it. And they grab this objective. So. Yeah. Matt now has eight, Oscar has five, so he just has to kind of start taking some guys out. Dark Eldar turn five. Uh, the warrior with the blast we rolled over and hid behind cover and was going to wait to come out next turn if, he uh, if the game goes on that long. Everything else kind of just shuffled around to, to protect the uh, objectives that they had. And uh, these warriors did shoot at the, uh, the knockdown mech. Really bad shooting. They all, all but one shot missed. That one shot wounded it with a crit, but the bouncy shield from the, uh, the mech deflected it right back. So Bounce shield. Bounce shield. It's our favorite piece of war gear today. All right, moving on to Oscar's turn five. Right, Orc turn five. Um, the Grotzuka blew up one of the uh, the warriors over here, and the big shooter shot at the, the guy over here in cover, and the uh, the big boss shot at one of the the warriors in the or one of the witches in the building just to try to knock them off of their objectives to at least bring it to a draw. Um, but Oscar didn't didn't kill enough of them. Only managed to take out the one warrior back over here. So as it stands now, we're gonna call it. It's ten o'clock. Um, bottom of turn five. Matt's gonna win this one. He's got eight points. Oscar's got five, and I get a lowly one. Do you like so, we are going to uh, roll up our 
results for our injured characters, see what goes on, and then um, we'll talk about the uh, the campaign after that. All right, so we calculated all our renown points and rolled our injuries. All three of my Harleys that, that were knocked out survived. Um, I think Matt lost a witch. One witch. One witch died, and Oscar lost the only model he did lose. He lost his uh, Burner Boy. So he is down a Burner Boy for the campaign, which that kind of hurts. But uh, everything else, I, Oscar didn't even lose anything else. That was the only model he had go out of the game, which was pretty good. Um, Final renown point total, I had 15, uh, 10 for playing, one for having a fully painted army, and one for having it completely WYSIWYG. Thank you, Dave. Uh, and then two points more for uh, First Blood. What did I get a third one for? I had a 15th, uh, a 15th point from something. I don't remember what. Uh, anyway, we'll move on. Uh, maybe I only have 14, I don't know. Oscar has 18 total from all of his points. He had five objectives, plus WYSIWYG and fully painted. Uh, no, that would be 17. You have 17 points. I can't add today, no, guys. No, I had another one. From what? I forgot. I, I don't remember either. Yeah, I think it was the same <laughs> one as you. We'll consider figure it out. Commander. Yeah, consider it commander. That's what Oscar got it for. Yeah, for having 75% of his army survive. That's what he got points for. But Matt ended up with 29. 30. I forgot WYSIWYG. 30. 30 points. <laughs> That's nuts. Um, yeah, and this is a good game for Matt because he's got a, he's got a, a, a big group who can grab a lot of objectives. Just wait till I have the Hellions in. Yeah, oh, it's gonna be nuts. Um, anyway, we're gonna be spending our renown points and our uh, requisition points to upgrade our armies, and hopefully we'll get some more of these bat reps in because this is a really fun format to play with. Like I said, I'm gonna post the uh, the link to their the, their blog um, in our comment section. Check them out, guys. They do some really really cool stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, and if you're in the Flint area, get up here and play. Right now, like I said, we have three guys up here tonight, but there are a lot of other things going on. It's the holidays, so, um, you yeah, we expected kind of a smaller crowd. But a lot of our guys are here playing bolt action or, or dead zone and other things tonight, too. So. That's true. That's true. Yep. Just let Dave know you want to play uh, in the campaign. If you've got someone to play against, great. Uh, you can post on our blog. Uh, Fresh Coast Gaming, of course, on Facebook, and then say, hey, I'm looking for a game of Kill Team, um, or po post it on the Gamer Sanctuary page. We all pay attention to that, too. Uh, and Dave does a great job of uh, passing on notifications to us. So if anyone's looking for games in the Flint area, get on out here. Have some fun. Thanks again. Bye!